This video will walk you through the necessary steps to create your very own cryptocurrency. We're not going to be making an Ethereum token. Um, we'll end up with our very own currency and its very own blockchain. Uh, there's a project out there called CryptoNote that gives us a great starting place. It's an open source project that we can fork and it comes with all the necessary overhead to get us started. Uh, out of the box, it's a working cryptocurrency that we can then modify for our own purposes. If you're coming from the Bitcoin world, uh, there are a few key differences that you need to be aware of uh, regarding CryptoNote. Uh, Bitcoin and its kin are what we call pseudo-anonymous. It's anonymous in the sense that your name and social security number, things like that, aren't associated with your, with your account. But if I have your public address, which I need in order to send you money, um, I can view all the other transactions you've ever made with that address. So it's not anonymous in that sense. Crypto note, however, is truly anonymous. Um, I can have your public address and use it to send you money, but I won't be able to see all your other transactions. Um, it does that using some pretty advanced math that's kind of outside the scope of this video, um, but you don't, need to, you don't need to know all the details in order to get up and running. Um, there are a few prerequis prerequisites uh, you'll need to get this all working. First is some kind of basic knowledge of GitHub and how all that works. If you know how to um, fork, commit, and push and pull, you'll be fine. Nothing too advanced. Um, you also need some basic uh, knowledge of command line interfaces. Um, this isn't out of the box going to have a pretty uh, GUI for us to look at. So you'll need to have some basic ability to type commands on the command line. Um, anybody can do it. You can just follow my instructions. It's just some people have some anxiety about that. Uh, ne you need to get over that in order to do this project. Um, so just those things, you're going to be able to build and work on your own cryptocurrency. Um, but if you really want to put it out there to the public, you're going to need what's called a seed node. Uh, cryptocurrencies run on a peer-to-peer -peer system, so there are a bunch of nodes out there around the world connected to one another and talking to one another to do a number of things like broadcasting transactions. Um, all these nodes need a way of finding one another, and that is the initial purpose of a seed node. It's a node that has a publicly accessible IP address that is hard-coded into the computer code of the currency or of the cryptocurrency so that new nodes have an, in have an initial point of connection to the network. Um, I'm going to be setting this up on an Amazon AWS server. Uh, I'm sorry to say that it's not free, but it is pretty cheap. And anyway, once your cryptocurrency gets out there um, on the exchanges, you'll be worth billions of dollars anyway, so it's a few bucks a month. <laughs> uh, there are three main steps we're going to cover. Uh, first is setting up our configuration. Uh, we'll be telling the code what the name of our currency is, where the seed nodes are, and things like that. Uh, second, we'll be going through the code compilation process in order to generate our wallets and nodes and all that cool stuff. Uh, and three, we're going to be setting up our seed nodes in order to get the peer-to-peer -peer network running. Um, I live in Memphis, Tennessee in the United States, so I'll be calling my example cryptocurrency Memcoin. Uh, whenever you see or hear me mention Memcoin, just replace that with the name of your cryptocurrency that you've thought of. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is fork the default crypto note um, code off of GitHub. I'll put this link in the description of this video so you can just click on it, but it's at uh, crypto note foundation slash crypto note on GitHub. So forking, uh, if you've ever done this before, it's, it's really simple. We just click the fork button version. So once you have your own fork of the crypto note code, um, if you want, you can change the name of it by going to settings and change into whatever you want. Then need to get this code on your local machine. So, so we'll copy the URL here that we need to clone. And I've created a new directory on my machine for this. Let's uh, just say git clone mincoin. There we have it. We have all the files now. Um, so the first step to get this working is going to be filling out the necessary settings, um, the bare minimum of settings to get this code to compile. So CryptoNode is a very well organized project. All the configuration is pretty much in one or two places. So let's go into the source directory and go to cryptonoteconfig.h. Um, if you're not familiar with C++, this is a header file. This is where things like this typically are. So here are all the configuration. 
we don't have to change all of these, but we at least have to have something in there for the ones that are currently blank. Um, we'll kind of go in the order crypto note suggests. Uh, crypto note name, we have memcoin, replace that with your name for your coin. Um, I don't know how I should capitalize this. Let's see. Yeah, I guess I'll just do that. And then another place we have to specify the name is when it's uh, building the targets, you know, the executable files that will be generated from compiling this code. And that is in C make list text. It's not here. Let's see, memcoin D. And that's for the, the daemon, so that's why it ends in D. So now it's the, uh, the stuff that really matters that we got to change, though. Um, you can play around with these numbers. That's kind of the fun of building your own currencies. You can see the effects that different settings have on how it works. Um, the first thing to set will be so first thing we'll set will be the money supply. Uh, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to use their example. Um, all of these things are just going to, all the numbers I put in for this are just going to be kind of the examples they give. So if you want to jump ahead and really quick fill those in, go ahead. Uh, the emission speed factor is set for us. Difficulty target is set at 120 seconds for us. Uh, you see a few more blank ones here. Um, we'll set the minimum fee at 100,000. Uh, we'll go ahead and set these default ports. Um, this will be the port you'll be connecting to the peers using. Uh, and again, these are just the examples they use, so these ports are probably pretty commonly used. Um, so there might be some conflicts with other blockchains you have on running on the same computer at the same time. So just something to think about. You might want to change these ports um, to a different random number. Uh, and now the last of the networking stuff we have to do is to set set the IP address of the seed nodes. So it's a good time to go ahead and get that set up. So for now, um, we just want to set up two servers so we can get their IP address for our code base. Um, we'll come back to configuring these things correctly, but for now we just want to go ahead and launch them um, so we can get the IP addresses. So I'm going to go ahead and launch two instances. Um, we want to go probably with the Ubuntu server. That's what the CryptoNote um, repository recommends. Here I'm setting up the, uh, the private keys for the machine so that I can log in using SSH on the command line. Uh, you'll generate and download a PEM file that you'll need to use later on, so hang on to it. All right, everything's launching. Go back to EC2, get the second one launched. We want to be pretty much the same. All right, so we wanted to get the IP addresses. I think we should have that at this point. And this is what we're looking for, the public IP address. Let's go back and put that in our code here. And grab the other one. Here. I'm 
then what we need to do, then we need to grab this default port. That's the port we'll need to open up on both of those servers in order to connect to our service. At this point, we should be able to compile our code. So let's try it out. Um, this is kind of the uh, command line stuff I told you was necessary. We go in the root directory. Um, I'm in the memcoin directory here and just simply type make. Uh, you might run into a problem or two during the make process just based on your system's configuration. Uh, feel free to post any errors that may occur in the comments of this video and we can debug it together. Uh, likewise, if you run into problems, check the comments first to see if that's already been solved by someone else. Uh, once everything gets compiled, we need to generate what is called the genesis block. So go into the uh, build slash release slash source directory and run uh, memcoin d, the, the daemon, with the print genesis transaction flag set. You'll need to copy that hash, paste it into the appropriate place in the source code con configuration file, and then recompile your code. Now we need to check out our updated code onto our seed nodes and compile the code there. So we'll SSH into the first seed node, git clone the repository, And then we'll try to run make, but it probably won't work the first time. There's going to be a number of tools that we'll need to install onto these uh, blank instances, these blank uh, Ubuntu servers. So what I'll do is in the uh, description of this video, I'll put a paste bin for all the installation things you need to run. Um, there's probably like four or five things you need to install. Once you get all those things successfully installed, you'll be able to just type make and it will build the project. While make is running, we can do some of the configuration in EC2 that we need to do. Uh, we need to open up permissions for the port that we set in the source code um, to, be able, to be able to accept traffic in and out. Um, so we just basically edit our inbound rules as you see here, put that port in, and allow anyone to access that port. Then, once that's all set up, we can do the exact same thing on our second seed node. So just log in to the second Ubuntu instance and do all the... Th all the th now that everything is built on our seed nodes, we'll go into the, uh, the build release source directory and fire up the daemons on both of the seed nodes. So we'll just go ahead and run memcoin d, get those started. And once those get up and running, everyone will be able to connect to the seed nodes. Now on our local machine, we can go into the build, release, source directory once again and get the, the daemon up and running there. It should successfully connect to the seed nodes and start updating the blockchain. We can also run the wallet, generate our first wallet for our new coin.
And most importantly, we can start mining. So we can get some of this new cryptocurrency we created. Just use miner, the address of the wallet you just created. And there you go. You're making money from your CPU cycles for your new cryptocurrency. There you have it. In about 15 minutes, you are able to create your very own cryptocurrency. The code for Memcoin is all on GitHub, so you can go ahead and get that and start mining Memcoin, or create your own and send us a link to your own cryptocurrency. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Bye.